Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hello, internet people. Uh, we're gonna keep working on my game. If it would, if it would show up, hello. Thank you. Great. I tapped the button, but not hard enough, I guess. All right. So last week, what did we do? We worked on the tile map. We made a bunch of terrains. We made a whole lot of terrains. Uh, so now we can we could we can draw things like some hills. What is this specifically? Oh my god, I'm not gonna remember what all of these are. They're different kinds of hills surrounded by different kinds of things. Right, this is a hill with grass on top of it. That makes sense. This is a hill with rock on top of it. Makes sense. Cool. Transition from sand to mud. Sand inside, mud outside. Right, right. The naming convention is what it is on the outside and then what it is on the inside. Ooh, this one's backwards. Hello. Hey, hey, Dayworm. How's it going, dude? Right, we made some we made some stone road you things. Can do it. Oh my god. Did Twitch suggest you use that because it's new? Thank you for testing it. But for some reason I can't test those unless we're live, which is very confusing to me. I don't, I don't know if there's like a check, check box somewhere I can fill. It was first in the rewards. Yeah, I think they do that for new stuff. When I added the fisheye back in, it was at the top. To be like, hey, new thing, use it. Try it out. You have to work today and tomorrow and then you're off to Canada. For not work? For like cool stuff? Like a Canada vacation? Who vacations in Canada? There's probably cool stuff to do there. I don't know, though. Uh, ooh, okay, so... So I want to start designing the... Um, like the opening area of my game. But before I do that, I want to look at... Uh, some... Oh, nope, let's not do that. Let's open Firefox like that. And then... Yeah, there we go. Okay, great. Um, so I found some nice person... Oh, you're going to see Zillia. Sweet. Well, that's fun. Have a have a great time. I hope you all have a nice time. And hopefully there's cool stuff to do in Canada. Probably a lot of cool nature stuff, right? Everybody lives in like the bottom like 10% of Canada. So I imagine there's a bunch of cool stuff to see. Uh, you know, wildernessy stuff if you're into that. Maybe you're not. I don't know. So uh, some nice person made a fucking piece together the whole map of uh, Soul Silver and Heart Gold, so we can we can kind of go through since we're using um, we're using a bunch of Pokemon sprites. We can kind of get an idea of like. I don't know. We can we can we can attempt to get an idea of their design philosophies. Um, and I think one of the most important things is the way that they design routes. They're all like there's nothing. Nothing about Pokemon is like open world. Everything is like boxed off. You're either surrounded by. Uh, by like rocks or I don't know, there's got to be a spot. Let's find a spot. Yeah, there's a bunch of trees down here in the corner. You're surrounded by a bunch of trees. Which, oh my god. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say, like, there's not this many trees. What did they do? So they just kind of filled in the areas with trees and rock where appropriate. That's it's a good enough effort. Um, so like even the even the towns are just like surrounded. Which I maybe for a town that's less of an issue. Um Kind of makes more sense you'd want a town to be in like a protected area thinking back to like city states needing to defend themselves although obviously that's not the, the case here but a town having only a few like an exit at the north and the east and the west and maybe south would make sense um yeah so all all the roots in uh pokemon games there i think there are some exceptions are are generally like long and narrow. And then within that, there are 
different ways to go. But they kind of always uh, stay within this like long, narrow design mindset. Um, and so then I was thinking like, I could I could probably make some make some designs like that, uh, and I do want to, but I want the game to be um, because of the way Pokemon works, where you you walk in some grass and then you run into a wild Pokemon or you talk to a trainer and then you end up in a fight. Uh, the, the battle screen is like a separate, it's a separate entity. Um, but what I want to do is be able to have like tactical combat that just takes place in the world. Um, and that's going to be a little bit difficult uh, for a few reasons. One, it means if I go with a narrow design like this um, for every kind of area, then that really limits uh it li limits the value of like long range attacks like a sniper rifle kind of weapon or kind of pokemon ability it's kind of like beam thing with long range isn't going to be useful uh in here well not as useful as it would be in a wide open area um so i think i need a good a good mix of things like narrow areas that are corridory like this wide open areas um open areas that have some amount of obstacles in them like i don't think we want just a lot of just completely open zones but maybe like a desert or like a like a a grass a grassland kind of thing would have some nice open areas um and then what i was thinking is you would see like overworld sprites like you'd see like a i don't know like a spiro eating food off the ground and if you were able to sneak up on it and initiate a fight with it then the fight just takes place wherever you initiate it and i'm not really sure what to do yet like like do i do i make some kind of like bounded area that you can't leave or um i think i, I might end up trying to set it up like Baldur's gate where you you could just go you could go anywhere during the fight if you get far enough away from the fight, uh, the game will be like, hey, do you want to just exit the fight? Like, you're far enough away. They don't know what you're doing. They don't. They can't see you. You want to just leave the fight? You can leave the fight and not be in turn-based mode anymore. You can go back to real time. Um, so I might do something like that. And then I think um, it'll be important to to have every um, every creature that's in the overworld decide if a fight starts, like, they'll probably run away, right? Like... They don't want to hang out. Cheese. It's an early stream. You just got home. It's it's regular time, but America does the dumb daylight savey thing, which um, which is really annoying. Not all of my clocks are connected to the internet. I have a desk clock that's not connected to the internet, and it was wrong yesterday. We were desynced. Yeah, it's fucking brutal, and not not even all of the United States does it. Which seems insane. Like, I know Arizona has parts that don't do it, or maybe all of Arizona doesn't do it. I don't know. Uh, somebody I play Destiny with lives in a place where they don't do it. But uh, he works in a place where they do do it. He, like, drives to a place to work where Daylight Savings Time d does get enacted. And that sounds like a special kind of hell. So, you know. Oh, jeez. Thanks, thanks for being a six monther. Hell yeah. Appreciate the support. Brazil already abandoned daylight savings time. Yeah, and uh, people who are dumb stick with it. It is all of Arizona that doesn't do it. Yeah, yeah. You never fixed your kitchen clocks for the last daylight savings time, so now they're right. That's impressive that you didn't have a power outage between then. Like not even a one, not even a quick little, little brownout. Oh, but geez, I meant to, I didn't, I forgot to hop on the Discord to uh, talk to you about it. I jumped into your stream for like 10 seconds and then realized that it was actually an hour later than I thought because of my stupid desk clock. Um, uh, but I wanted to tell you that your audio sounded good and your, the performance of that weird game you were playing also looked absolutely fine. I can't remember the name of that game. It's a weird meme game. It's the thing that the It's Sweeping Time thing is from. Um... I, I want to check that out to know more about it because it seems weird as fuck. Maybe, maybe in a good way. I don't know. 
Maybe in a good way. Ah, <sighs> so. So anyway, uh, designing a game with Pokemon sprites but tactical combat is going to be a weird, a weird situation, but I'll make it work. All these basics in education and learning. Yeah, I knew it was something's basics. Our power's gone out like 10 times in the past few months. Yeah, it seems like whenever weather gets bad, the power goes out. Yeah, you know, shit happens. It's nice to get rain, though. Living in a desert. I appreciate the rain. Um, So... So I need to keep in mind that when I'm designing maps, I want there to be a nice, um, a nice transition between overworld exploring real time and turn-based combat. Um, and I think, I think that means having wider open areas, but then part of, uh, part of what could be frustrating about that is you have a very limited view in Pokemon because you're, you're top down. It's not like a 3d game where you can adjust the camera and like look around everywhere to get an idea of your surroundings um or or a third person 3d game for that matter it's a fixed perspective um so something i want to be able to do is press a button to like like zoom the camera out so you can see more uh to maybe get an idea of where you are and what's going on because um in 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 these kinds of small routes it's easier to kind of see like, like over here on the right, you can literally see the, the top bounds and the bottom bounds of the route. And later on, it changes a little bit, but you're still very close to seeing the edges of the area you can explore. So if I have a larger area, I want to be able to zoom the map out so you can get a look at that more easily. Damn, Team Worm, you haven't had a power outage in the two years you've lived where you do. Dang, dude. Fucking tell me the general area where you live and let me come live there. Put in a good word. You did it work while you had a crane load? Oh, that's scary. I assume there's some kind of automated system that stops that from being catastrophic, right? Like everything locks in. It's not just like the crane is like and dips, dish, d ditches the load it had. It's good to know that the audio is nice. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, I assume that game is not very demanding if you're streaming it on a laptop and like it didn't it looked like it was nice and smooth depending on whenever i entered you might have still been muted no i definitely heard you talking and then uh i went out into the kitchen and crazy pants was also watching you you have to say that writing brazil has abandoned dst was super funny to you well, like, DST is a person that's been abandoned. A crane decelerated instantly and was swinging hard. Okay, yeah, that does still sound kind of scary. DST is the Brazilian acronym for STD. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah, that is pretty funny. And if, if that's the case, you probably have not abandoned them, I would imagine. They're, they're probably still alive and well in uh, everywhere they can be because people are dumb. Okay, so the other thing I want to look at is um, like in internal areas. Oh, cute little waterfalls. Oh, shit, I know where this is. This leads up to like the last the last town that you encounter. Shit. It's almost like I played a Soul Silver ROM hack recently. Um, okay, cool. There's a cave and then a the little arrow leading to the cave. Okay, so what is what can we get about their design philosophy for caves? There's there's definitely little small areas. Uh here my, my face cam is blocking the thing I want to talk about. Let's scroll there we go okay so there's like small small little hallways like this but then also big big large areas which it kind of seemed like they're for caves they're willing to go like like bigger than a, a root typically but but then they use like raised areas um 
to then like to make it so instead of like a big area, it's a big area that's broken up into a bunch of little paths, a bunch of little forks where you kind of choose where to go or what to do, or you you get to a dead end and then there's a, a ladder to take and you can see like oh shit there's an item. Oh actually this is a good this is a good spot to think about. You can see if you miss this item you can see it. This is a good tease for the future that there's an item to come to come to. And then what would you do? You'd go through A, and then A would lead you through this nonsense to B. And then where does B? Oh, B's up here. He puts you here, and then you have like rock puzzles to do. You got to go back up and put the put the rocks in the right holes. Then you can get to C. C takes you to a tiny hallway. That leads you to D. D is a relatively small room that leads you to E. E is another hallway that leads you to F. And then F leads you finally to that fucking item. You don't think Baldi's is demanding? The game purposely resembles old edutainment games. Yeah. I think there are some cases where games look like that. They try to look old, but then they do some things that, um, that actually make them more demanding than you would expect. Um... I think Sea of Stars is a good example of that. Sea of Stars looks like Chrono Trigger. It looks like an SNES game, but it actually has like a lighting engine that is constantly being like calculated. So it's a little bit more demanding than a game from that era. Uh, but yeah, I would think for the most part that's true. Um, okay, so I think that's enough looking at uh, looking at Pokemon stuff kind of get an idea of what we want to do um the other the other thing i have to consider is that um oh shoot i need to pop open paint um the other thing i need to consider is that i want room for puzzles uh i want to have like puzzles in the overworld kind of like zelda does sorry gotta move paint out of the way okay so let's open i think it was this yeah okay and then paint. Are you you're behind the desktop? Let's let's fix that. I don't like that. I like desktop being at the bottom. Gotta find paint. Paint can go right there. Okay, cool. Uh, so this was the initial design design work that I did. What last week? Week before? Oh my god, time. Um. So we're gonna we're gonna have like a. It's not actually an island, but it is kind of a an area blocked off by mountain um up top and then bounded on all other sides by water and i have i have no idea like how actually big to make it um i want each section of it to be pretty large and maybe we'll we'll put in some like physical barriers to kind of like like denote like okay hey this is this is like a a, a chasm that separates the grass beach from the rocky beach probably not a chasm but something like that um yeah but it needs to be pretty freaking big um and honestly maybe we start over with the dock and kind of design that area I don't know. Eh. I don't I don't have a bunch of those things in the tile sets yet, so let's I guess we'll start with like grassland and beach zone. Um and we'll try to figure out like how, how sparse the trees need to be. Walk around in it. It needs to feel it needs to feel big. It needs to feel big. Uh, and then maybe maybe I need to figure out some kind of tra fast travel system if it's uh, if it's like too big. Um, so let's see. I don't I don't want to just delete everything. So honestly, I feel like eventually we'll delete this. But for now, this is like my little starting area where I've been testing like moving boulders and uh, getting tall grass to function. All these pluses like 300 megabytes max. Yeah, that would be tiny. Basically about going up three levels. Each level is randomly generated every time you enter the mode. Mm, and they don't randomize if you die. That's what you mean. Okay. 
That's that's nice. And each level adds new enemies to the game. That's weird. It's only three levels. I guess there's probably a bunch of stuff to do on each level, right? Okay, so let's let's maybe come let's come like way down here. And I think we're gonna need like each zone. Uh what what we need fucking water. Clear clearly I have it. I need I need this. You're not sand grass. You're it's sand plus water. There it is. There it is. Okay. So this tile set looks a little funky. Um I kind of figured out drawing things like this. The way that Pokemon uses these, like they they never they never have this kind of beach. It's all it's all this kind of beach where there's a lot of straight and then maybe one little tiny change and then a bunch more straight. They don't they don't do angles. Which is strange. Uh, but I guess they're not going for realism. They're going for like a cute little kind of style. Oh, it's a beta cheese. That's really interesting. I, I would have thought since that, I don't know, the game seems like it's been around for a while. Um, okay, so let's make sure we're on the ground level. We are on the ground level. Um, ooh, one thing I wanted to check, I realized it would actually be nice to have two ground levels. And I want to see if I can add that in. Okay, so the physical layers is for collision. Navigation layers. Ooh, where do I add in all of these fucking things? Is it just layers down here as part of the tile map? It is. Okay. So, cool. We can add a new one and then we can move it. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over to here. And we're going to have ground two. Uh, the reason I want this is for transitions from one kind of ground to another. It actually helps to have them uh, be able to lay on top of each other for certain situations involving transparencies. Um, and so then if we just make you, let's see, can we just move you? And then we'll move you again. And now you're on the other page at the bottom. Okay, and we're just we're just going to move you all the way up. Uh, you'll be right underground. Are you right? You are. Okay. Cool. Great. Uh, that should solve the problem that I had before with uh, some transparency issues. Okay, so so I guess we should just draw a giant beach. Let's just draw a giant beach. Uh, shoot. So we're on terrain, so we need to select sand water again. And then just to double check. Okay, water is around the edge. All right, so let's just draw like an enormous beach. There we go. And we got to keep in mind the general shape that I want, which is like it, it it's 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 elongated. It's kind of a rectangle, but then the beach kind of meanders. I don't know. We'll just we'll just feel it out. Every level you have three attempts before the game resets. Oh, like fully? Like if you were on the last level and you failed three times, you have to restart the whole game? I'm pretty sure the lives reset every time you change levels. Okay, that's that's nice. And while Baldi's Basics Classic, the Game Jam game you assume is the one I remember, yeah, is still around, plus is simply the complete game. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It's always fun when uh, Game Jam games turn into something. That Pony Island game seems like it was a Game Jam game. All right, what? Do, do we want to just commit to Pokemon's design where everything is angular? I think maybe once I once I make my own tile sets, I think maybe we don't do that. I really like I like the idea of being able to have like angled beach areas, like a nice, a nice curve like that. But it just looks a little funny. But you know what? Fuck it. We'll just we'll just go with it. It looks more realistic. 
Ugh. I kind of hate it, actually. No. Okay, what about... That's something like that. That looks okay. And then what if we extended this more? Okay, so it's it's like two in a row at an angle that looked bad. If you just come out once and then you, you go up again, you're fine. Okay. Like, let's, let's put that... Put that to the test up here. So we could do like... You have this spot and then here. How bad does that? Nope, nope, that's, that's, you're disobeying the rules again. Okay, so it looks fine until right here. Oh, because, because this is only a single. Okay, so we'll just, we'll leave it like that. Does that look okay from a distance? It doesn't not look like a beach. It looks a little funny. Ooh, could we, could we, hold on, hold on. Like, have it come out a little bit right here? What does that look like? Ooh. Be cool to have a tide system and have things only visible during a uh, low tide. The complete game is still getting updated. Last week, they added a new character alongside other things. Uh, like a playable character? And does that, like, change what you can do in the game? Fucking my throat. Pokemon doesn't do angles because you can't really walk into angles. That's true. You need to have uh, at least like a full tile to step on. I like I like the idea of being able to do it visually though. Oh, they added a new enemy. Okay, that's still cool. I like games with lots of uh, different characters to play as though. A nice way to add value. Hmm. It is really fun to just play with this and to see what kind of imagery you can make. Um. Actually, let's let's extend this little sandbar. Hold on. Cool. Cool. Probably not realistic. Like, there's probably rules to how beaches are formed. And I'm probably not obeying them. That's okay. Damn. It already looks like so large, but like... I don't know, if you, if you think about it from the point of view of like an environment that an animal lives in. Like how many, how many crabbies could live on this beach? Not that many. Not even like a thousand, probably. Dang. Dang. enemy they added is named Dr. Reflex. He shows you two balls, one green, one red. Okay, he's already beaten me. You click the green one, he gives you money. If not, you simply repeat the minigame. Okay. Well, that I could do, I guess. I might be stuck forever, but at least I would have a chance to get out. Oh, holding shift lets you just draw a line. Oh, that's interesting. And then control shift lets you draw like a space. Okay, so how how fucking big do I make this thing? Let's let's commit to like that. Ooh, and then. Need to kind of start going up. Yeah, I guess I'll just draw a very rough shape of what I want. Because again, I don't want the beach to take up the entire island. But it's, you know, it's going to surround the island. And then... I'm going to come over here. Go a little further this way. And then maybe a rectangle up to here. And then... And I don't know, like, do I want the beach to go 
all the way over by the ruins. Or maybe this area will be kind of rocky. Because like, like this area, I want to be a beach that is rockier. But then maybe this area is like full on rocky, very little beach. And then I need to make sure there's room enough for uh, like a big old ruin thing right here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like we could fit that. Like how? Let me go back to that Pokemon map. There are some ruins in the Pokemon game. Where they at? No, they are ruins of elf. Oh, I need. I can just click that to zoom in. That did not work the way I wanted. Hey, there we go. Okay, I guess I just clicked in the wrong spot. Um. Okay, that's pretty heckin' small. It is interesting how playing like open world games, you just kind of accept that like the world is a shrunk down version of a real world. I guess Pokemon's not really an open world game. And any game where you're like traveling around a country or a planet or a region, everything is like hilariously too small. It would probably be not fun if it was actually the right size. Okay, so clearly, clearly we can we can make a, a fun little ruin section in a small area if if we were so inclined. Um, and we could just have a bunch of it be indoors. Okay, so what happens if you leave him without completing the minigame? He gets red, goes into his office, grabs a sledgehammer and starts banging it through the halls trying to find you. Jesus. So then you just, you just play the game, right? Are you pressured for time? So like, he'll come up to you and you'll be like, oh fuck, I don't want to play your dumb game right now. I got stuff I got to complete. He only stops once he squishes you. Squished enemies can't interact with you, even if you are also squished. However, a squished player can't collect the notebooks to proceed. That's, how do you get unsquished? You just wait longer? So... We're gonna have the dock be here. Whoa, drawing a line. I can never remember. It's really weird using a sprite compared to compared to this. Can can I not? Will you not let me draw that? Thank you. Okay. So I think that's a good point. We'll have the dock be in here. And then all along the top, we'll just have like um We'll pull a pull a Pokemon and have a bunch of hilltops. Um, let's see. We got that one hilltop that's like hill and rock. Let's see if I did that one correctly. Uh, let's start it over here. And if we just did this. Oh my god. You know, this is this is way larger than I thought. I didn't realize how zoomed out we were. You know what? I don't know. It, we we could shrink it down maybe. We'll 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 work within the space we've got. Uh, but then also, clearly, this needs to start sooner. We could have something like this, and then now, what happens if we just try to put another layer right on top of you? Are you gonna look weird? Oh no, of course you won't. We would have to go to like ground two and do it and then and then we'd have to get out of drawing to be able to oh no we don't no we don't know there's a button you can press to see everything is it this yeah okay so we could successfully make a mountain like this we would just have to uh have to have a different layer for each level that's on top of the other. Dang, that would take a lot of layers. We could do it though. Every second matters in Baldi, because you might turn a corner and Baldi can be there and end your game. Wow, what a what a bitch. None of the enemies can kill you, however, they will stall you. Dr. Reflex, before he shows you the ball, completely stops your movement and forces you to look at him if you aren't. Okay, you get unsquished after some time. Okay. Mm, I don't know if I like that. That makes the game sound like it's just like... 
annoying you. Like, you know you need to get shit done, and it's just like, nah, too bad. God, right, I switched out of this, so my hill rock was unselected. Okay, so... So let's say... Actually, hold on. Let me just run the game. Let's see how this impacts performance, because we have a giant map it has to load now. Looks like we're okay. Um, and then I wanted to think about how much is visible. Um, we can still walk around, right? Great, great. Um, so we can see, I feel like this is a, this or maybe even a little bit less is an appropriate amount for the default camera zoom. And then I want to be able to zoom out a little bit more and then even more. Um, let me full screen it. So, uh, something like 20 tiles up and down. Okay. Okay, so we'll just keep that in mind for like what I can see if I were, if I were over here. Like how high would I need to go uh, edgewise for these mountains for it to look like Uh, for you to not see the top, essentially. And if I let you zoom out, then we'd have to go quite high. And... Hmm. That might, that, that might actually be a good argument to not use the terrain that lets you draw shapes, but to just, um... to, like, manually draw this on my own. Because the the general idea is there, you're not you're never gonna come up here. This isn't gonna be a playable space. Okay, so with Doctor Reflex, you either choose to do the mini game to get money, or choose to ignore it and save the time, and then that comes at the risk of him squishing you and losing even more time. That's actually that's an interesting choice to make games that's a it's a good risk reward balance well, as long as he's not a giant pain in the ass um all right so this might this might be something i regret but i feel like the smarter way to do this is to just set it up as uh to not use the terrain so we need to find where the rocky hill is who actually will it tell me hill rock do you, do you do you say like do you have property information? Hmm. No. Okay. Well, then we'll just we'll just go find it. Um. Okay. So it's not. I don't think it's in the first tiles. I think it's in three. No, no, it's not in three. Let's make this bigger for a moment. All right, we're going to go check two. Oh, it's in two. Okay. So was it you? I think it's you. Yeah, this is the rock one. That's the, the grass one. All right. Most enemies have items that counter them, especially the legacy enemies. Okay. Playtime stalls you by making you jump rope five times before being able to move again. However, you could use your safety scissors to cut the rope and leave early. That's really funny. So if each one is randomized, or is it like about you need to like figure out what enemies are there to figure out what items to collect to counter them? So then you can like explore quickly. Shoot. Okay. I need to be in the tile map section actually. So it's in, it's in section two. Great. It kept us here. Okay. So what we want to do is be on ground two and nope, nope. We're going to do, we want one corner and then just like, like a line. Oh, we can't draw a line for real. No, we can draw. We just have to choose the tool. 
Whoa, wait, hold on. What are you, what are you trying to do here? Ah, oh, I seem to have pre-chosen the size of the line. I don't know exactly how I did that. That was strange. So it's like by doing that? But then it chooses the space above it. Okay, I do not understand at all what that was what was going on there. Okay, so we want this to be tall as fuck. Shit, and it needs to go like the entire length of the island. Shit. Shit, okay. Maybe maybe we just work in sections for now. Let's see. So if I if I was zoomed out this much, yeah, I mean I can easily do that. Okay. Oh, and then I need to actually like erase this. Will you let me? Okay, great. And it doesn't mess with the shape. Perfect. It's at the top of this lower thing. All right. Okay. Uh, so then what we're going to do is, oh yeah, the question is how high do I think it needs to go? Hmm. So in a normal Pokemon game, you were standing right at the edge. I feel like you might only see like five or six high. But then if I want you to be able to zoom the camera out even more, that means I need to go even higher than that. Still on a race. So, I mean, I guess honestly, there's nothing wrong with seeing the mountaintop. Mm, yeah, because the idea is that this is a, a barrier that you can't climb over. Enemies always appear. Okay, so it's not just random enemies and random floors. Dang, I kind of like that idea better. Floor one enemies always appear. In the three floors, floor two enemies appear in two and three. Okay. So like the first floor, you're only going to see certain ones. The second floor, you can see anything from the previous floor and that current floor. The map itself is what ra is randomized. Okay. So then you're just kind of exploring, trying to figure out where the notebooks are, and you know what enemies are going to be where. Yeah, it's still all right. Okay, so let's let's say that's tall enough. Hopefully. Let's see. Uh shoot, shoot. I need corners. We need corners, people. Just go like that, since clearly we just need a bunch of corners. Um, so let's go up let's go twelve high. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Because again, the idea is that this fucking mountain is the, it's preventing you from progressing. It's supposed to be a very, very clear, you don't go this way, don't try to go this way situation. Uh, and then we're still on a line, so I can just like whoop, whoop. And I can't imagine trying to make a game before having these kinds of tools. I would assume for like early games, like the first Mario, they probably didn't program in a way to, to do this nicely. But I would imagine with like every other game, from like SNES generation and on, they probably had tools for you to be able to uh, very quickly iterate and draw tiles and shit. Maybe not though. God, I can't imagine like manually programming each tile, being like, this tile is here at this X and Y coordinate. This one is the same tile. Slight increase the X coordinate by one. Increase the X coordinate by one again. Seems like a giant pain in the ass. You can also buy a map that shows you everything in the everything in the map, including the notebooks. Mm, so it's like Elden Ring with a more detailed map. There's a shop every time you enter the elevator. Weird means every time you die or change floors. Okay. The number of notebooks also changes. It's interesting. Oh, it increases as you go up floors. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. 
Team Worm, you've heard it's basically more a uh, more complex Mario Maker. Yeah, I would assume you wouldn't make it as nice and friendly as Mario Maker because it's like, uh, well, not to be rude, but video games are designed for idiots. So <laughs> I would assume they wouldn't design it on the same level or uh, it wouldn't hold your hand as much. But yeah, you, you would hope that they would give their developers those kinds of tools, especially because that means then you can have like less skilled people doing that work. Can I just like, ooh, right. It would be this tool. Nice. Oh my God. Okay. So then for now, this is just a wall. Maybe, maybe I would, I would have little things on the side of the mountain that you could do. We could do that like what what would that look like we would have like a little section that's just flat ground or something and then we would need a we would need like a stairway or something which or a ladder what is a who they never do that in pokemon but what does that look like does that look weird as fuck oh shoot also you can't just have like a constantly continuing ladder they have a bottom and a top Huh. I don't know. That kind of works. That's interesting. Okay, cool. We're not doing that right now, but uh, I I want I want to be as open ended as possible with the kind of uh, terrain I'm willing to build so that I can make all sorts of weird little puzzles. Um, okay, so we can do the same thing over here that we were just doing with this area tool and just like cool, cool. Look at us. We're making a mountain. They do do that in Pokemon. They have you climb a ladder up like the side of a hill. I kind of thought they only use ladders for um, transitions in cave levels. Like, okay, let me open Firefox. Like over here. Oh, that's zoom out. I thought we would zoom in. Shoot. Undo. I need to undo. I need a cave. Uh, Like, like the, these ladders. They just kind of go up into nothingness, but like you, you can pretty easily read that as like, oh, I climb that to the next level. I don't remember ladders being used for anything else, but I have not played every Pokemon game. I may have played every, at this point, every um, isometric. Or no, it's not isometric perspective. It's like oblique. All of the, all the ones that don't have a 3D engine. I think I've played all of at least one game from each of those generations. But, uh, but holy shit, do I not remember them? I thought I had not played, um, uh, I, I purchased Omega Ruby and I thought I had only played it a little bit. I, I remember that's where I got my shiny Zubat. And so I charged my 3DS and went to look at my file. Apparently I got eight badges. Don't even remember, remember. All right. So would that be high enough? Like, if I wanted to zoom out like crazy, if the idea would be like your character's got like a little drone or something and he could like throw it up, zoom way the hell out. Would I want to, would I want to go out this far? I feel like that would be really nice. So I think we might as well just make this bigger. So could I take... If you could, can you like copy... I know there's a there's a roundabout way to copy things, but like if I just, well, you can. Whoa, that is an interesting thing you can do. Cool, dude. Strange. So you hit Control C to copy something, and then when you hit Control V, it then just like kind of floats with your cursor. Oh, that's fucking cool. Spiffy. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going about this in an efficient way. I don't even need to be using copy paste here. Oh, OK, don't hit escape. That was not what we wanted. Click back on the tile map. Bring me back to the tile map. Thank you. <sighs> Some items in Baldi's basics have more than one use. That, yeah, that makes sense. The safety scissors should be like nearly infinitely usable, right? <laughs> 
Oh, like not that you can use it multiple times for the same thing. You can use it for other things. You can use it to temporarily disable another enemy. You stab him with the scissors. I'm going to guess no. But that sounds funny. Let's, let's try to be kind of quick about this. Though actually, the point of this is to enjoy ourselves, so maybe I shouldn't worry so much about speed. Okay, so I think that's that's probably tall enough for our you can't climb up this mountain mountaintop. And so then we can just like whoop, whoop. cool. Okay. Now, do we just use control paste, control copy, control paste to extend the wall? I think that would be the thing to do. Okay, so we're going to mouse and then we're just going to choose a giant section. Ooh. Ooh, but then do we want, we want the mountain to not just be at the same horizontal level. That seems, that seems sensible. Okay, no, let's build it first and then we can add in little tweaks to it. We'll just get like the general shape. Nope, you, you messed up, bro. You're one off. Hold on, hold on. Is that better? How did I, seriously? I did, I did the same thing again. Okay, down here. That, that guy. Select that guy. Does it still not do that? It selects one above it. Why would it do that? Okay. Let's just make sure. That is, in fact, what it selected. Hmm. Okay, fine. I'll drag from one square below. Oh, it's, it's because it's on a different terrain level. The bottom section is part of the actual ground. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's on me. That's on me. Um, do I want to keep that that way? Do we just put it all on ground level two? Shit. What would the consequences of that be? We had initially only had them on different ground levels because we wanted to use the terrain function to stack them on top of each other. All right. All right, let's let's clean this up then. Let's fix that. Oh shoot, that entire thing is on the lower level. Okay. Yep. Yep, let's fix that. Go back to ground. We're going to delete all of that. Yeah. Oh, you don't stab him in the eye. Okay. Honestly, not surprised. You cut their wires and they kind of just spit. All right. All right. Uh, no, not the bucket. We just need, we need mass erasure. Oh my god, it's like this whole thing. This whole freaking thing? Okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. Get it. We'll get it back. Okay, so now we're back on ground two. And what we need to do... is not be on eraser. I'm never going to remember that, that the eraser function is like this separate thing. You choose the shape of what you're drawing and you can draw with it. And then you choose if you want it, if you want to activate the eraser, but you're still in that shape, whether it's the pencil or the line tool or the area tool. Very weird. It makes sense to be that way. It's like more effective. You get more options with very few additional buttons. But my brain can't handle it. Okay, so now, now you'll probably let me copy like a normal thing, right? Yeah, great. Oh my God, I drew the wrong thing. Holy shit, that's very funny. Because I need to be on that. I just duplicated the sidewall a million times. All right. Oh, <gasps> mojito. Oh, no. 
You don't know where I be. Ah! Ma'am, we're hanging out in here. Oh my gosh, I know. Oh my gosh, everybody just ditches you, huh? She goes to sleep on her comfy little hammock and she wakes up and everybody's gone. Okay, well, there's something something to sniff on my desk. On the side of my desk. Uh, did we go too far? No, we didn't. We didn't even write that. That line is the, the, the origin. All right. Okay. So my goal is to make this opening area serve as kind of a... Um, Good luck. Like, like Have a demo. fun. Don't die. Ah... You're gonna go eat something and take a nap. Nice. I fucking love naps. And maybe stream. Sweet. I'll uh, I'll stop by if it's after my stream. You have a good one too, cheese. Thanks for hanging out. Throw the cheese. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Throw yourself right on out of this out of the stream. Now you go for sure. <laughs> Bye. Mojito! Hey! Oh my god. That girl just wants to monopolize my attention. She's so cute, though. Okay, so... I think real quick, we'll finish... Ooh, actually, no, hold on, hold on. I want to get water set up. Uh, because looking at this beach, everything looks weird. So, so first of all, let's extend the beach up underneath the mountain. Uh, that's at the top, and it's sand plus water. Okay, and we want the area tool? No, because we're in terrain, so we can do the group, the, uh, the area tool without being on it. I don't understand why that works with terrains. Ma'am. Hey. Hey. Oh, let me get her some dry food. One moment. One moment. got snacks in the bedroom, but those won't do. Mm hmm. Okay. Just realized a flaw in my plan. The... This hill terrain has transparency. So... We need to put something behind it. Okay. Okay. We'll solve that. Solve that in a moment, I, but I want to see water. Right, but we don't have just water as a terrain type because there's no reason to actually have that. So we'll just go find some water and draw it out. Well, also, one thing that sucks, uh, water in Pokemon games is an animated tile. But I can't, for the life of me, find anybody who has, um... Who has, like, ripped those. Alright, what's the deal? Why can't I draw? Wrong layer? No. We want to be on the ground layer. I've clicked you. Hmm, I was on the mouse. Hold on, hold on. Let's recreate that. No, you... Yeah, yeah. The mouse is for selecting things that are already in the map. So if you're on the mouse, you can't select a tile and then draw. You will instead select a tile that's already drawn. Okay, great. Oh, and then it shows you where it is. Oh, cool. All right. All right. Just I don't know what I'm doing, but that's fucking cool. 
All right, so just for the sake of kind of being able to have a realistic picture, I want to be able to see this. Okay, so... So what would we be doing here? If we wanted to have the mountain kind of go out into the coast, we could do something like this where the sand continues on. Okay, yeah, I think we'll do that. And then the other thing to think about was in tile set two. God, this is like when you use your credit card enough and you memorize the numbers. I'm going to eventually memorize where all these stupid things are, and it's like absolutely useless knowledge. Okay, so yeah, if we do a, um, we do the like rock background, then it looks kind of normal. Or the mountain with the transparency around the edges. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do something like that. Uh, and then we're right. We need to have the corners. And they go. They go quite high. She. Okay, you know what? For the sake of being able to see this, let's go to. We should have been on ground too. Uh. All right. We're gonna go to ground two. And then we're gonna take the eraser. We're going to erase like all of this. That might be enough. Let's find out. Start drawing. Can I just do a line of them? Cool, bro. Okay, clearly not enough. Oh, it's way harder to see if my line is 45 there. And we're just going to erase all this. Hmm. I bet there's some cool shit I could learn watching like a an advice video about how to do this. Probably some cool like efficiency tricks. Um, okay, so what's the easiest way to fill you out? We could just do this by lines. Oh. I'm on a racer. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever gonna fucking remember that. Hmm. Yeah, this is okay speed, I guess. What kind of cool puzzles could you do with a mountainside? You could have boulders you push off of it, and we already have... I actually have an animated sprite for boulders. That would be cool. I guess you could still, um, you could really do any kind of puzzle and you would just bring into, um, like if you had some kind of laser puzzle where you're bouncing lasers off of mirrors or something, you would just have to bring the angle into play, like the fact that one level of this mountain is higher up than the rest, so you'd have to, like, angle the mirrors accordingly. That doesn't seem that novel or cool, though. Looking for something that would be cool. Oh, I went too far. Looked up my corner. Hmm. Oh my gosh, Mojito's losing her mind. I'm gonna bet. Oh, I'm gonna go pick that girl up. Hey.
Unstick yourself, girl. All right. All right, Momo. You're hanging out with me. Oh. Yeah, those are your snacks. That's breakfast, girl. Okay. So the next thing to fix is on the ground layer, the lack of transparency. So let's actually highlight. Oh, she doesn't want to hang out. All right. She just wants to yell at people. That's understandable, Mojito. I get it. I get it. Okay, so it was this, and then we're just gonna... It's gonna like... Ooh, can we move? No, if we, can, if we, if we hold our shape over to the side of the viewing window, it doesn't like scroll for us. Oh my god, she just got down off the desk, didn't want to hang out, went back into the hallway, started yelling at people. And by people, I mean me and Crazy Vance. Okay, so this is the first beach. Oh, this is enormous. Ooh. Okay. All right. Ooh, and then what? What do we actually want it to look like over here? Yeah, we're gonna need to extend this out for sure do the same thing on this right side that we did on the left where the mountain sticks out past the beach so I want this area uh, like I was saying to be like a like a good demo like if I if I go all the way through with making this this game conceptualize it as like if uh, if Pokemon Red had a demo where you could get the first badge So I want this first area to like demonstrate everything the game has to offer. And oh my gosh, Mojito's just losing her mind. Uh, oh my gosh. Usually when she's Yowlin, if I put her on the desk, she'll demand some scratches and then lay down. But she is, she is inconsolable right now. I hope she's okay. God damn. Uh, anyway, I want this area to function as a demo, uh, which means I want to show off the kind of simulation aspects that I want. Hey, Dirk Lover. You know me. Hello. Well, I know you. What a coincidence. Also, hello. So, uh, so for the opening, so for the opening area, I feel like I need to have uh, part of what I really want. Oh, I went down an extra layer. Okay, for now, for now we just don't tell anybody. That's fine, that's fine. It's just, shit, undo, what? How much does that undo? Just that, okay, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Um, so I think I need to figure out, like, I want to have some people in this area. Not just wild animals doing their cool wild animal simulation stuff, but I also want to have people that are like, either uh, collecting artifacts from the ruins or ransacking the uh... maybe ransacking is a little a little extreme They're, the the abandoned lab they're just looking for stuff you know and maybe some of them are openly hostile but I want most of them to be like friendly friendly but like cautious and maybe even uh they'll like challenge you to a battle since my my conceptualization of the world is that most people live in protected towns 
but anybody who ventures outside of the towns has like they've got their own team of pokemon that can help them deal with shit so like they see you and they're like ah you're just a fucking kid you're new you're clearly new to this shit you don't have a fucking charizard and a blastoise and a venusaur if you tried anything i would just sick my charizard and blastoise and venusaur on you and you'd be fucked and then maybe they'd be like okay but you know what like here let me use some of my weaker symbiotes and we can we can have a little battle give you a good challenge help you learn the ropes Okay, so we're going to do something like that for now. Can you not hold shift and scroll to go sideways faster? I, I tried it a second ago. Let me try again. Yeah, I so you hold shift to be able to draw like a line. Actually, that's if you're not in the line tool. Let me see if I can do that. Yeah, and no matter what, you can't go sideways faster. I bet, I bet there is a way to do it. Uh, that's how a sprite works natively by default i bet there's a way to do it in godot i just don't know how there it might even just be a, a setting i have to turn on like auto scroll while drawing or something maybe tile map auto scrolling something like that um i was saying earlier i can i could probably figure out some really nice workflow tips if i watched a, a video about how to do this stuff efficiently. I've watched a few videos about how it works to figure out how to like set up terrains and stuff, but not not a video specifically focused on like uh, ergonomic efficiency kinds of things. Um, okay, so let's undo that. So, ooh, hold on, hold on. Okay, dang. So actually, we do want this extra layer. Shoot. Can, can I undo everything I deleted? I did. I, I thought I had not drawn it this low, but I did, in fact, draw the hill this low. So I need it everywhere that there's not beach. Fuck. For now. Oh. Okay. So then we would go over to here. For now. Okay, and then, and then somehow I'll zoom all the way out. Oh my God. Can't even imagine trying to like build a, an open world on a 3D game. There must be Godot or other game engines must have some way to um, to allow you to effectively look at your whole world because just this is like killing my computer. <laughs> it's so laggy trying to look at this whole fucking thing. Um, okay, so we have the we have the basic shape of our island going so far. Uh, so the next thing I wanted to do was extend out over here. Uh, oh, and we should add some water in. Where's water? Tile set one. Yeah. Ew. <sighs> Will I do it in just one map? For this area, yeah. This, like, outer world, this outer overworld section is just going to be one map for sure. But um, I... I have a video that I need to watch about like instancing and like loading in new sections of map. Um, and depending on what information I get, I may, I may change this. So honestly, I probably should have watched that video first, but I didn't. Um, but it's, it's mostly functional. Like it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit slow. It hurts your budget computer soul. Yeah, it's hurting my semi-budget computer soul. Um, but definitely like inside areas when you load into um, like inside the lab will be a uh, a separate map that loads separately. I should try the easiest setup before. 
maybe it's 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 like I just don't know, you know. I I don't know what I don't know about like efficiency. I feel like a lot of a lot of Godot tutorials that people make are just like here's how you can do a thing. But very few of them are like just try and do stuff. Yeah, that that's my my general goal right now is like a, a lot of this I might I might find a really good reason to undo to redo all of it. Uh hopefully not cuz that's that would be a pain in the butt. But I'm I'm kind of open to like it's like work in progress experimentation a kind of a situation. Um but yeah, anyway, a lot of Godot tutorials are not like like okay, here's how you make here's how you mess around with tile maps, here's how you set up terrains, here's how you do that stuff. Now, if you're going to build a whole fucking game like the size of a Pokémon game or any other RPG, here's some things you need to know about efficiency. Oh, we can just move it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dog. Okay, that's exactly what I want. We're going to just kind of move this out to here. Um and I, I really need that. I really need like and I'm sure somebody's done it. There's probably some nice person who's made a sweet video about designing things on a large scale in Godot. Things you should and shouldn't do. Cool. All right, now let's add some water. That was what I was trying to do. I got distracted with my curiosity about whether or not I could just move tiles, which you absolutely can, and that's real fucking cool. It's really rewarding using this system and being like a complete outsider to it. And also being a complete noob when it comes to game development stuff and just being like, well, I feel like it would be nice if I could do this. And then it works that way. And you can do this. Oh, it's fucking sweet. Okay, hold on. Uh, control shift for a large area. I have the eraser on again. Oh my God, I'm never gonna fucking learn. Let's, let's see how far I can zoom out and still effectively hit an individual tile. That looks pretty good. Now, eventually, I would like the player to be able to just, like, get some kind of... Oh, fucked it up. Get some kind of ability like Surf. Shit. And, uh... Oh, does control not let me do that? Weird. Okay. I thought control let me draw lines, but clearly it doesn't. Uh, so anyway, if the player has the ability to traverse across water, then uh, clearly we can't just have the ocean just end. But I think that'll be like a... A later part of the design will be worrying about how this starting area connects with everything else. And for a large part of the game, you won't be able to come back here. You're going to like get somebody's help. And they're going to be like, hey, I have a boat slash I need help repairing my boat. Thank you for repairing my boat. Would you like to leave this place? What's what's your deal? Everybody else who comes here has a boat. They're like treasure hunters or scavengers. But you're not. What's your deal? Oh, you woke up here. That's weird. People, everybody who else who was in cryo sleep here woke up hundreds of years ago. We don't really check to see if there are people waking up anymore because no one's woken up here for hundreds of years. We thought we got everybody. Where the hell did you come from? Oh, well, tell me about it while we're on the boat and I'll take you to a nice town where you can do whatever you want to do with your life. And then and then you'll go to the first town. And from that point on, then it's like open world. And then eventually you'll be able to make your way back here, but not for a while. Would the song I'm on a boat be allowed to be hummed in your head? You can you can do anything you want in your head, Derek Lover. No, no thought crimes. Think whatever you want. Okay, so now we have like, we'll have like a nice canvas of water surrounding the beach. 
and that'll give us room to change the uh, the geometry of the beach. And have it still kind of look like, uh, you know, not, not realistic, but semi-correct. Oh, yeah, we're going to need to add. Oh, no. Yeah, we're going to need to add more water. Oh, my God. You also thought that was Dirk, but it was not. Holy shit. Hi, Icy Wings. You have the same color text name as Dirk. <laughs> sorry, Dirk Lover. Also, sorry, Icy Wings. Uh... Holy shit, that's really funny. It would honestly be nice if, for my viewing of chat, if I could make it so that people didn't get to have the same color. That's really fucking funny. It's okay. Great. Thank you for forgiving me. Now, to be clear, you could also hum, I'm on a boat, in your head, if you wanted. Okay, we need to, we need to expand here. Could we, okay, let's, let's see if I can nail it. No, oh, I'm like too far zoomed out. Nope, nope. Almost had it. There we go. Nice. That's a lot of ocean. It's okay. Sweet. You suggested for a platinum ROM hack, you change shiny the shiny Blaziken line due to the other starters having color changes for shinies and sprite changes. Wait, the shiny Blazik Blaziken doesn't have a color? Oh, no, just in that ROM hack, they all have other changes, right? They all have other color changes. I wonder if there are ROM hacks that have, like, I, I've always wanted a semi shiny. Like, like, let the shinies be really rare, but have there be one that's like kind of rare. That's just a slight color change. I wish more Pokemon had um, more variations. A common one. An uncommon one, a rare one, and then, of course, the shiny, super de duper de ultra rare. But yeah, if every other uh, starter Pokemon gets a gets a, a unique new shiny, why why not also let Blaziken? the dark red and made the rest navy blue with bluish silver for the long mullet on Blaziken. That sounds cool. Okay, what do we... What does this look like all together? Yeah, I guess that's okay. But then... What are we doing here? We need to extend the rock. Ooh, but it should be beach along the edge. Okay, okay, we got this. We got this. Uh, so we need beach. Hello. Sure. Crazy Pants is trying to appease the mojito. Cat is losing her mind. Um, okay, so we... Uh, let's see, let's see how this looks. How, how do you look... If we're, hold on. Hmm. Look, if we had this in front of you, then it would look to the player like you might be able to walk there. Okay, so we don't want that. So then what does it look like if we have this underneath? Hmm. Yeah, I don't really like that. Okay, we'll just have it be rock then. The rock looks more sensible. Oh my gosh. Mojito, my girl. You mind? Mm. 
the uh, the ROM hack creator liked what you did. Well, that's cool. Then hopefully it'll get in. Sprite, according to the ROM hacks creator, they said it would be light blue when it comes out of a Pokeball. Only when it comes out of a Pokeball? That's a weird, a weirdly specific time to have a specific color. Or I guess you could just mean like out in combat. I don't know. Mojito, are you, are you done complaining at everybody? Hi. Hello. Are you here to hang out? What do we think? Hmm? Just gonna give her a little bit of attention. I've been losing her mind. Mm, because the okay, the animation has an aura to it. Okay, I get it. I get you. Yeah, that would make sense to change the uh, to change the color to match. It's a cool idea. Oh, oh, she's tucking in. All right, all right, we're good. We're good. Ah. Uh, back to figuring this out so then i think what we'll do is just a real quick not sand not sand we don't want sand we want we can just choose that we want this did it did it find it for me because it's on a different tile set it didn't switch tile sets let's see what happens if i go to draw it i can't actually draw it <laughs> thank you crazy pants see how that looks mm, I don't love it but it might be the best that we can do with the limited tile set and again this is all just placeholder your kitten Lofi your kitten's name is Lofi your kitten Lofi is loafing on the household Xbox, staying warm on it as you play Tina's Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Nice. None, none of my cats have figured out laying on top of game consoles. They they have figured out laying on top of a heating pad, but that that's been about it. They don't have the, I don't know if they don't like the the noises the game consoles make or what, but they don't really seem into it. Okay, so let's let's just zoom out, take this all in. We have the enormous frame of our island. I think next I'll kind of go in and um, I think we'll we'll make the beach look better. Oh yeah, okay. So we're gonna finish water. We'll get a nice a nice frame of water around the beach section, and then we can go and kind of edit the beach and give it some shape rather than it being these awkward lines. Um, and then, then I, like, I think we'll handle all the major ground types, right? Like, we'll, we'll add in the grassland and handle the grassland transition from the beach to grass. Um, we're going to kind of leave this starting section alone for now, because this will be the, the, like, footprint where the lab is. So then... Essentially, the player will just see a building here, and then when they go into the building, that'll load a separate area. So I can kind of like, I can still have this little uh, little starting section where I'm tinkering with animations and interactions and things working the way that they should. Okay, so then let's zoom over. Oh, actually, I think it was down. It was like down below us. Yeah, we need to keep. Keep adding water. You renamed her to Lofi. She was originally sourdough. That's also very cute. The family that used to have her, her seven siblings and mom named them all after breads. That's fun. 
We're going through names and she loved Lofi. Lofi's a really good name for a cat. Is, uh... Well, for the right cat, I guess. I, f I feel like most cats could fulfill the moniker of Lofi quite well. Okay, so let's make sure we have room to experiment. Then what we want to do, we're on water. It's something like that. Sure. Oh, and then we might as well have this kind of go up and up. Hey, hey, I'm holding, I'm holding both control and shift. Don't be like that. Oh, we should save the project. She loafs so frequently. He likes to loaf on your lap. If she's not on the Xbox. Makes sense. Mojito's like that too. If I'm if I'm sitting on the couch, she wants to be on my lap. Unless it's really hot, then then all bets are off. Then she kind of just wants to chill up on the cat tree away from everybody because it's too fucking warm. But yeah, if I'm sitting on the couch or laying in bed, she wants to be on top of me. She also wants to sit on top of me when I'm at my desk, but it does not work. Even if I lean back in my office chair, she'll get on my lap and like spin around in circles and like try to figure it out. And she's just like, nah, and then leaves. And despite having done that like a hundred plus times, she still, she still wants to give it a try. <laughs> God damn it. I keep leaving off one tiny little edge. Ooh, we're gonna have to figure out what kind of trees we put in each section of the island. That's so many tree options. Ooh, shit, and I want to have a crafting system. I don't know if I want to go th go to the point of like having you be able to cut trees down. That seems like a lot of extra work animation-wise. But that might be cool. Otherwise, well, I don't know. I guess, I guess mostly the crafting system would be like for weapons. I, I guess you would you could you could use wood for weapons, but for the most part, I feel like it would be metals, metals and magic gems and other weird, fantastical items. Not uh, not wood. We're not gonna be like. Not like Stardew Valley, we're not building a fucking house and fences and shit. Well, that could be a cool little like mini game thing. Like instead of storing your uh, your your captured creatures on a stupid computer, maybe they live on like a weird little digital reserve. They live in the computer, but in a cool place. And then you could build things in there. Ah, but then it would be digital and you wouldn't need to be cutting down trees in the real world. Hey, I was holding both the buttons down. I'll fight you, Godot. I can fight you. So yeah, maybe we have the trees. Uh, maybe you can't cut them down, but I don't know. They could drop food of some kind. Oh, and especially if uh, my goal is to have like creatures running around on the overworld, eating food, playing, running around, then it would make sense to have like uh, like trees, I don't know, a tree could like drop an apple and a rattata could go and eat the apple. Actually, that's a cool idea because then you could, um, 
you could sort of get an idea in your head of like, oh, I know about this creature and it, the things it does. So if I want to capture one or a bunch of them, I should, uh, I should go find some sweet apple trees and they'll come, come to the apple trees because they need snacks. It would be interesting to let the player plant apples. Like you see one running by and you're like, oh shit, that guy's got a, he, that, that Rattata is like a, like a shiny version. I want to catch him. So I'll toss some apples nearby and see if he'll come grab them. Yeah. God, are we almost done? This is so much water. Hey, I'm holding both buttons. Thank you. Like I'm dealing with so many, so many tiles zoomed out so far that if I hit Control and Shift and immediately try to click and drag, Godot hasn't caught up yet. Hey, okay. I think this is actually the edge. Great. Cool. Okay. So now we have a nice water buffer. And we can go in and kind of... Um, we can bring the beach in. We can bring the beach out. We can kind of, like, tweak it. Make it look like how we want. Not even... Actually, how I want sounds so planned. I kind of just want it to be kind of random. Let's see, can I just draw with you and it'll be, it'll work out? Well, we can, but you know what? I think it's better to just stick with shapes. Okay, let's, let's, let's undo that. Hold on. Okay. All right, so it, it can be straight for certain sections and then... Hmm. I feel like I should look up how beaches are shaped feel like yeah let's do that let's do that let's check out some coastlines maybe for uh let's add the keyword like world building so I, I feel like uh oh cool an in-depth guide about how to draw coastlines okay and there we go uh the quality of this is terrible that's unfortunate. Oh my god, while well, this is a really good guide, it feels incomplete by the lack of erosion mentioned. For example, Scotland, which you mention in fjords, has one jagged coastline and one straight. This is largely due to one coast being shaded from severe erosion by Ireland. Cool. Cool. Okay, we don't need to get that far, but... It is cool to see all these strange shapes that are made. Whoa. Little jagged spot is cool looking. Okay, yeah, this is this is like too grand of a scale. Why do fantasy coastlines have such jagged edges? Hmm. Yeah, there there are a lot of jagged edges. I do want I do want a realistic world map, but it's it's a it's like it's not that scale. It's like a realistic area map. Ooh. No, that's still still uh still too zoomed out, too large of a scale. But I guess it still kind of gives you the idea that there should be it's it's like kind of like meandering curves, and then some spots are quite jagged. All right. All right. How do we... How do we enact that? So... 
Let's see, can we bring you out? Yeah, that looks that looks okay. What if we send you out more? Kind of limited because of the tile set and how it's used in Pokemon. Kind of limited with what we can do, but kind of uh see I kind of want to have little situations where you create kind of like maybe an estuary is not the right term but a little like protected area and have uh maybe we'll put like shallow water in here since I have I have some tile sets for that and then like the player can walk in this area and uh maybe we'll put, put special special creatures there Yeah, that looks okay. This is a little bit too geometrically samey. Yeah, something like that, sure. And then maybe this guy comes out. This is more artistic than I thought it would be. You gotta go, Dirk Lover? All right. You have fun as well. Have a nice day. It's cool to just have like a uh, sort of blank canvas, like do whatever you want. Mm. Yeah, that looks cool. And then maybe it's like I wish I wish I understood sand better. What would you look like? That? Sure. And then let's let's zoom out and see like how much space does that take up? It's like my goal is to be able to have lots of little areas that are all kinds of different things like that. Maybe some of them just have some creatures, some spots like that have puzzles. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we got we got space. All right, cool. Hmm. One thing to think about is if I do want puzzles to be out in the open world. Uh how to convey their boundaries. Like, um, like Zelda's open world is kind of nice because it's handled by individual screens. So then any puzzle, they just make sure it takes place inside of a screen. And I guess it's, it's wrong to say screens because sometimes it's a, it's a finite area that is bigger than a screen. But if you if you go past the edges of it, then it just loads into a new area. A lot of them do take up a single screen. Ooh, this is this is a little too close. Let's can we do that? Nope, nope, that's the exact thing that looks weird. Okay. It looks a little better. That looks alright. And then maybe over here, let's kind of kind of do that. And then we can... Hey, I'm holding control and shift, bruh. That? Mm, that looks a little too samey. All right, we'll just avoid it. We'll just not do that. This. Um, let's check out some Pokemon beaches. Get that map. Where's that map? What other kind of things can we do? Like having little sandbars that stick out. Sure. You guys do anything cool? I don't want to be that guy, but Pokemon's world design is a little bit boring. Hmm. I 
Yeah, like the roots are filled with all sorts of little little branching paths that lead to items or to an extra trainer or something loops around and connects. But uh not a lot of cool like beach stuff. Damn. Especially um like heart gold soul silver. Hmm. There's like really not a lot of ocean area or this map is not complete. That's also an understandable possibility. Hmm. All right. Well, shit. Pretty much everything we do, we'll have a leg up on Pokemon. Um, ooh. Although one thing Pokemon does that we haven't done is have little like islands. I want to do that. We would need to replace the deep water with shallow water. Unless we want to tease. Okay, nope. Always hold and make a make a shape. Could uh do the do the classic Metroidvania, here's an item. You can't get it right now kind of situation. Pokemon loves to fucking do that. God, I think as early as what, like Viridian City? Second town, you can see, uh, ooh, is it an item or is it a guy who's on the other side of a little tiny patch of water that you can also use cut to get through on a, it's like he's, he's blocked by a bunch of shrubs. One shrub is cuttable and then also partially blocked by a little pool of water. And then I think if you talk to him, he gives you dream eater. I guess that's not the same as an item tease because you don't necessarily know he has an item. You could probably make an informed guess that he does. Something like that. Um, hmm, we could kind of build all of the... We could have like a bunch of reefs in one section with the idea that are like um like tidal tide pool areas in one one section with the idea being like erosion and rough weather hits one side more often. Yeah, let's do that. Uh let's see, should we just take some whoa? Oh, just right right clicking delete stuff. No. Okay, cool. That's really nice to know. How did I not try to find out what right-clicking does? What a weird thing. All right. Anyway, let's build another little protected area. Make this one, like, weird and long. Hey. Okay. I'm holding control and shift. Don't be like that. Hmm. It didn't end up being that long. There we go. Something like that. Ooh, do I want the beach coming out this far? Ooh, I don't know. Okay, and then yeah, we'll have to come in and make all these shallow water. Yes, I, I guess even up to here. Hmm. All right. Shoot, yeah, do I have 
Let's see, I have a sprite for shallow to deep water. Well, that actually looks... Cool crap, I hit Control x not Control z And Control x ju it jumps you to some spot. <laughs> I don't know what it actually does. Ugh, holy shit. Um, but I don't think I have sand and shallow water. Okay, let me make a note. That's a thing we need to get going. A uh, terrain. A terrain is what it's called. Okay. Note made. Uh, shoot. Right, we're not in our terrain anymore because I accidentally closed the thing by pressing Control X and jumping to some weird place. Uh, sand plus water. Okay, and we're back. Okay, definitely coming up against the uh, the obvious flaws of having a giant fucking tile map you're working with. She's quite laggy. Hmm. What if we just look up like cool looking beaches? I keep thinking of like interesting shapes for for uh coastlines and thinking of things I've actually seen, but probably look up some cool pictures. I like that cool math games. Wow, it's a lot of audio auto completes. Cool math games. Cool math. Cool math games run three. What is this? Ah, cool math games is a website. Okay. Cool coastlines. Don't allow Google to do anything. Ooh, I fucking love these weird little like tall, like rocky islands. Holy shit, that's a lot of little fucking boats. God damn. God damn. Hmm. Right, that's definitely something that we can do. Add um at rocks near the coast. For sure. There's some sprites uh in the tile map for that already. That's a cool idea. Ooh, the I love the multicolored transition from like really saturated wet sand to slightly to dry. Cool looking. Ooh, okay, something like this where there's all sorts of little tiny islands and then I think what we would do is spots to walk, like sand in between, shallow water in between, rather. That's cool. Okay, so let's do that real quick. Um, ooh, do we want it to be like a, a big tide pool that has a bunch of that in it? seems like a cool idea but not you know what let's do let's do that later and how hard would it be to init to in initiate to create a title system We'd have to like have the time of day. And I feel like the easy part would be you, you like essentially having like two maps. Do I want you to be bigger? No, you're okay being small. You would essentially have like two maps, a high tide and a low tide map. The only thing that would confuse me uh, would be transitioning from one to the other. That sounds not only complicated to achieve if you knew how to do it, you'd need like animation for all of the areas changing. But then also, well, the coastline is really, um, and 
Also, you'd have to like enact the animations for the change like in a huge area. Damn, it sounds cool to do though. Okay, hold on, we want you more like that and then you to be like that maybe? No, no, I'm getting, getting into that uncanny valley for the coastline situation. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. And then we'll, we'll add a little detail down here. Oh, actually, yeah, that looks, that looks all right. Maybe. Yeah, that looks okay. Sure. Hmm. Also, it'd be nice if there were um, like random, random terrain generation algorithms for uh, for Godot. I bet somebody's made one, but I doubt they're incredibly easy to use and adapt to anything you're doing. But that would be a cool skill to learn. Let's have one be like long. These are all like little short guys. You can be long too. That yeah, looks cool. All right. Let's zoom out. How much have we done? Oh my god, the zoom is so slow. I'm guessing this is like a quarter of our uh, right side. What a map. Hmm, more like a third. Okay. Ooh, and what are we going to do with this actual corner that needs to not be a corner anymore? I guess we really got to, like, smooth it out. Honestly, I feel like I should do that first. I don't want to be working on stuff and then realize I should smooth it out. Okay. That's a smart thing to know for workflow purposes in the future. Let's go into tiles. Uh, oh, we don't even have to find the tile. We can just click this. I need, uh, I need water. And so then let's kind of just let's be at a at a grander scale here. I feel like what we want to do is kind of just like take some bites out of it. Hey. Okay, so that gets at a, uh, well, clo closer to a realistic shape, I suppose. Um, okay, so let's think about this. If the idea is that this, this side is, like, more protected, it wouldn't be eroded as much. So if, if we're getting erosion more here, this section of the curve would be, like, elongated. Now, despite studying civil engineering and specializing in water resources, I don't know fucking anything about erosion. Uh, on, a, on a coastline, specifically. Like, I know it's worse at different times of the year, and different geographical features can result in it being a lot worse or not that bad. Hmm. Okay, then let's kind of lessen... We come up to here. Oh, what did I do? I did not. I somehow opened something. I'm drawing a terrain. <laughs> How the? F what did I do? What did I press? Oh my god. Okay. Uh. Still looks a little iffy. I feel like we still need more, like gentle transition. This reminds me of like trying to draw a circle and like you can get the theory behind a pixelated circle but actually drawing it could be quite hard
Hmm. Okay, so something like that. This still looks a little off. Hmm. I guess we could fill it out a little more. So now it's like I've cut away more than I need to cut away. So we can kind of come in with the terrain, build it back up. Yeah, I'll give it a try. Oh, this little section looks so weird. Okay. Okay, so you still know that you're part of this terrain, right? Yeah, okay, okay. And then doing that will match you up, all right. Ooh, nope. Wait, why does that look so bad? Hmm, it's only a single. Right, I need to remember that it looks weird when I have a little corner that is one single tile wide. Uh, okay, I mean, we can fix that by just going out a little more right here. That. Bro, you still look really weird. You know what? Nah, that's just, that's just you. That's fine. You're a weird-looking beach tile sprite. It's totally fine. Mm. Yeah, it looks okay. Okay, so we're going to have to come in here. It looks too samey, too repetitive. So obviously when we come back and start working on individual little details, um, like I think even just having little extensions down like this will make it look a little bit less geometrically repetitive and weird. Okay, but yeah, right, the time to do that will be in a moment. Well, when we get here. Oof, okay, that looks messed up. Hmm. Yeah, that looks better. How about that? It's okay, a little weird. Look at, ooh, looking very weird. There we go. All right. Let's see how terrible our corner looks at a distance. Okay, yeah, that spot looks just garbo. But we'll figure it out. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. My back is sore. Doing too much... Too much rhythm-based VR gameplay. All right, so we'll just wiggle our way back up the coast. Ooh, we should save. Okay, so we have, like... A little protected spot, some random little island, another little protected spot, a set of little tiny, not even islands, like sandbars. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll add some rocks in as details. We want to come in at all. That could be interesting. It have like a considerable inlet. Sure. I don't know how realistic that is. Let's fucking do it. Like, 
I'm pretty sure that when someone is playing this, they're not going to scrutinize this on the scale that I'm scrutinizing it from a realism standpoint. But, you know, somebody might, and then they might appreciate what I did. Oh. Yeah, actually, that works for now. Okay, so. So I kind of want it to be like... Maybe like extend this guy to be like a big long like sandbar. <laughs> uh huh. Not like that. Hmm. Actually, no. Let's have a little bit of space. And then like a little, little like starting area. That. Let's make you like quite large. We haven't done something like this yet. Mm, you're looking a bit geometrically plain, my guy. Although, I don't know, that could just be your thing. Okay, and then this area we definitely want to alter. Hmm. Nope. Hmm. That looks interesting. Ooh, maybe like one little island in the middle. No, no, let's leave it open. And we'll make this all shallow water and have like a really big... Ooh, I wonder if there's like coral, like a little coral reef kind of thing we could build. Pokemon ever done that? Hold on. Find out. Or maybe somebody uh, made one for um, for a game. And we can use their assets temporarily. <gasps> oh my gosh. A Corsola Torterra Fusion. Very cute. Heckin. Dang, that's cute. Corsola Metagross. Oh my god. All the ideas for Corsola combos are fucking adorable. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, cool. So some nice person on DeviantArt has made some cool coral tiles. Great for dive maps, right? Because dive is an ability. Okay. All right. What do you... A public use tile set for non-commercial projects. Okay, cool. So that fits with our plans perfectly, which is that we would uh, replace them before we actually charged any money for our game. Cool. Okay, sweet. I'm going to leave that open. That's fucking sweet. All right. So it'd be cool to have something that looks like, um, like you'd have shallow water you can walk on and then a deep, deep water area, but then a bunch of cool little like coral sprites. Uh, so you can kind of see like what's in the water. Ooh, that would probably mean we would need to make a version of this water tile that has opacity. Um... I guess it has more transparency. It's fully opaque right now because it's meant to be a final bottom layer and not be see-through. So we'd probably need to adjust it a bit. Um, ooh, so what do, we, what, do we, what do we feel like the sandbar down here would do? I guess it could, just, it could just gently curve and rejoin or it could just kind of peter out. Yeah, maybe it just kind of peters out. Uh... Not like that. Oh my god, I hit control X again. How can I not find where control Z is, bro? Okay, and, and now we're out of the tile map. Uh, tile map, terrains, samples, water. We're back. Okay. Alright, so we would need to do something... Make this go a little longer. 
And then, I mean, really, wouldn't it erode from the outside? Like, you would think that would be the where the bigger waves would be. Hmm. Look at, I love this shit, because I'm like, what does the sandbar look like? <laughs> don't, you don't get to know my location, Google. Even though you totally already know my location. Don't be like that, though. Stop bugging me. Okay. So, uh, like this might be a good example. No, because you can't tell where the ocean is. Like, both sides look like they have civilization. Oh, there's a lady. Seven unreal sandbars in Florida. Where you can walk in the water and they're super relaxing. According to Nar City. Hmm. Does this curve out? Like, this is where the ocean is? I hate that with, like, all these, I can't fucking tell. Where's the ocean? Hmm. Yeah, I was thinking they would be smoother along the inside because there would be less wave action. But maybe that's not the case. Maybe I'm conceptualizing it incorrectly. Huh. Sandbar? Tybee. Just a bunch of pictures of boats. Hmm. Okay, this kind of looks like what I was thinking. Like, inside, it's kind of a nice, gentle curve, and then the part of it that's facing outside is a little bit crazy because it's getting hit by waves, and the parts of it that can be worn away would be. Ooh. The four types of sandbars present in various estuaries. Okay. Okay. Take me on a ride, informational website. Whoa, the compound sandbar looks crazy. Okay, U-shaped. That's kind of what we were seeing a lot of. Linear, very boring, very typical. Okay, that's sure. I've seen that. The sidebar. Mmm, like it gets it gets eroded into, but not fully. So it almost looks similar to linear, but then it's like it's attached. Okay, cool. Let's use our newfound knowledge. What do we want to make? Um. Well, I feel like you're already kind of a linear one, so. See, the idea was on the inside, it's got very gentle curves, and then on the outside, it's kind of crazy. Although the linear ones looked pretty, um, pretty gentle on both sides. Uh, no, no, let's, yeah, let's not fuck with it. That's all right. Actually, did it look better the way it was? I kind of like this weird little thing going on. Yeah, that's true. Let's leave it. Let's leave it. And the compound ones look friggin' crazy. That might be too hard to represent visually. Uh, okay, okay. Hmm. All right, we gotta remember to not let the beach just be weird and boring. Let's kind of get some some shapes going on. No, just feels wrong. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, what do we build? Next? Did a cool sandbar. Maybe just like, let's go boring. Let's just have like one little island. 
Not even really an island. It's a tiny little thing. How small does something have to be before it's not an island? Or something like that. And then let's make the coastline a little more interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know about having these little single, single tile outcroppings. Seems better to go for multiple. Uh, and then sure, we'll have a little straight section. And then maybe let's do one of those cool, um, sidebar sandbars. Gonna come, come out. Nope, don't like that. There we go. Go ahead and connect you right there. We'll make it nice and whole. Yeah. Kind of getting the hang of this. Let's go a little more like that. And then, then maybe one more before we kind of draw the main body. Nope, that's off. That. And then I don't know, how long do you want to be, buddy? Uh, and they typically kind of come out more. Something like that. Hmm. Ooh, they kind of end at more of a tip. Okay, and then let's unboring up this little section. Um, let's see. Maybe you could just jut out a little bit. Ooh, nope, more than a little. I hate the single transitions. But like that. All right. What else? We could do another protected little kind of estuary tide pool kind of thing. Ooh. I guess tide pools would probably be more likely in a rocky beach. So maybe we save a lot of that for the other side. Oh shit, I totally forgot to pay attention to what time it is. Okay, it's 1120. We got 40 more minutes of beach drawing nonsense. And then uh, we'll do some Timetsi if my back can survive also this morning my chair decided that it no longer uh can provide lumbar support whatever the little there's like a little hook that came loose uh once before and so now like the the angle between the back of my chair and the seat is supposed to stay constant but it just doesn't i had to open up my chair before and like reattach it and uh looks like we're gonna have to do that again and that is, that is a very unfortunate thing to have happen to you on the uh, day when your back is sore and you fucking need lumbar support. Fucking brutal. Um, okay, how do we... Let's, let's make, like, a really interesting one. What if we had, like, some... Like, this doesn't need to be realistic. Let's, let's draw, like, a crazy spiral or something. All right, let's do that. Okay, so we'll hop over to tiles. We'll grab the water tile and then we'll just like pow. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Now let's go 
back to terrains. Back to sand and water. All right, so we are. And then we'll get like a nice, like, uh, kind of meander, whoop, kind of like meandering curve going. And like, what do we, what do we want to do? Like something like it'll kind of come in like that. And then maybe we could like kind of have a little break in it. So it would make, make sense that water would, I hit control X. <laughs> How do I always do that? Like control Z is so easy to hit. I don't think I've ever had trouble hitting control Z in my life. Okay. We got to click the tile map again. And actually I'm seeing we need some more space. So let's. Cut some more water out. All right. Make you look good in a moment. Uh, reselect sand and water. Okay. So how do we want to do this? It's like you need to start coming in. idea would be to have you be like right here okay that's not pretty but it kind of worked Ooh, do i want to have like meta puzzles where you have to pay attention to the shape of the ground Could be kind of fun. Like a puzzle. You gotta enter a code. And the code is is that these the out on the beach, there's sandbars shaped like numbers. It feels a little forced. Could be fun though. Like uh D, &D has the rule of cool. The thing's cool, let the players do it. The whole point's to have fun. I want realism that takes a backseat to cool stuff. Okay, and then, so then the idea was going to be like, we have a little break right here. And we'll have to clean that up. So let's break off more than we need to, and then we can clean it up. And then we want to keep the spiral going. It'll kind of go sharp. Ah. Motorcycle people. You're a motorcycle person and you just want to go fast. And you don't go fast dangerously. Great. Thank you. You're a motorcycle person and you gotta fucking rev your stupid engine to be a loud piece of shit right outside my house. I don't know. Just fucking, like, go die. Hmm. The thinnest, what is the thinnest we can go? We can have, like, it's like two... Oh, we could almost have it go to like little spotty. It's like little, little, oh, a little tiny guy. That's very cute. I like the idea of continuing the form, but it's like worn away to be like mostly not there anymore. Mm, no, that would be violating. That's fun. Let's be a little more randomized. We'll kind of have a little bar here. Maybe a little thicker. That looks kind of cool. It's fun. Okay, so let's clean up this spot. Uh, what am I going to do? We took off more than we needed to because the idea was to come back in. 
Let's draw you an edge. Uh, boy, I don't like the way that looks, though. Um, that's just how you look. Hmm, honestly, actually, that looks a little bit better. I'm getting used to the crappy looking tiles. Hmm. Hmm. That's bad. Yeah, that might be fine. Ooh, another long sandbar over here. Oh, bro, I'm hold come on, I'm holding shift. I'm holding control. Don't do me dirty like that. Oh, that might be too long. Something like that. You're too small. Hmm, <laughs> it kind of loses the flow. In fact, even this little part does. You know what, maybe we like intentionally lose the flow. We just have like a bunch of little... No, I like the little tiny squares. Sure, that's fun. Uh, okay, and then obviously now this looks incredibly wrong. So we need to... See, we can... There we go, we can redefine that as an edge. Let's do the same thing here. I thought that would work. Hold shift, hold control, wait, then drag your mouse. Did that not? Interesting. If I do that, sure, you'll define that as an edge. But what if I do the space above it? You won't redefine that as an edge. Interesting. You're still just having that abrupt transition. Strange. I'm sure it makes sense for some reason. Okay, so let's kind of... Uh, okay, no, hold on. We'll go more so we can do another... Nope. Something like that. A little longer, a little gentler. Oh, up here looks a little iffy. Hmm, maybe we cut this guy out a little more. Okay, do we do that? We select water. And then... Nope, go to the pencil. Crap. Select water. Go to the pencil. And then uh, just cut this out. Okay, and then now we'll fix it. Um, how, with how much? That? Little transition like that? Hmm. Still a little too straight, so then let's... Put a little bump in it. No, what if we extended the bump? Yeah, that looks fine. Hmm. Okay. And then what? For this, we'd have the very center be deep water, but most of it would be shallow water you could walk in. Sure. All right. How are we doing? How close are we? I feel like we are... Oh, we are at the transition. Okay. Okay. You know what? After zooming out, I feel like I want this... Little, little more zoomed in. Hmm. Nah, that's good enough. That's good enough. There's no reason to. This doesn't need to be perfect. It's like a first draft. Hmm. It is a little bit, maybe, like, too busy. But I guess I, I need to actually uh, experience it as the player. And yeah, maybe I should adjust my walk speed and then come on over to here. Hmm. 
Mm, don't like you. Damn it. Let's just... If we... Does that look... Well, now you just kind of kicked the can down the road. Kicked the problem can down the problem road. Hmm... Yes, I don't need to get rid of all the transitions that are single spaces, but they do look weird. Yeah. Yeah, they look better not being there. Well, again, that's from a distance. Hmm, okay. Now what? Uh, zoom out. It does look weird zoomed out. Pokemon maps look weird zoomed out, right? Hmm. Let's close the world building stuff. Hmm. Now they go with such a simple shape for all of their islands that I guess they do look... They don't look like islands zoomed out. They look like little square, squared off things. Hmm. Is that better? I don't know. Okay, so wait, let me let me save and then make a look at I think in the player code in the script I have a velocity set. What if we change this to like five? Actually, let's make it six. Let's like double our walk speed. And then Let's put ourselves in the world. Uh-oh. Godot's not responding. Uh-oh. I'm asking too much of it. <laughs> okay, this could actually be a problem. Oh, we're good. All right. Okay, so back to the 2D section. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Let's go on a hike. Okay, so the beach is very far to our southeast. Definitely need to add a run command. Okay. We have made it to the south part of the beach. Ooh, adding little footprints would be sweet. Also, maybe even... God, I'm just going to get fucking lost thinking of ideas that would waste my time, but be cool. Um, having the the walk animation be different on sand because of the difference in uh, how you move on a sand surface. Like your feet sink in more. So it'd kind of be like a delay before each step where you would like sink. That'd be interesting. Don't know if I'd actually want you to move slower overall. That might be annoying. What a journey. God, this fucking chair. I can't. All I get is fully reclined or fully sitting up, but not leaning against it. Damn, we gotta add like some rocks. What about like other beach shit, like kelp, 
stupid fucking not kelp like seaweed washed up on shore oh my god this feels like the desert in minute okay we're here kind of we're we're, we're at something what are you nope you're just the still the edge oh my god I think you can just drag the player and have them start in a different position. Probably should have just done that. Let's get a different music track. Oh, I think we made it. We made it to the right side. Oh my god. Hell yeah, alright. Here's our cool swirly dude. And of course we can just walk on the water because we don't have collision set up yet. Okay. So definitely need to put shallow water around the beach. And... So if I let the player move at like twice this speed and also zoom the camera out two or even three times as much. Oh, this seems like a cool scale. Seems all right. Our little sandbar. Boring little island. Mm, ooh, also, I think I need to make the transition when you're turning a little, just a little quicker. Yeah. I still have it. I haven't like dialed in those values. Pokemon does a pretty good job of making it feel like you can, uh, when you're running around, switch directions pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah, that's too slow and clunky. Ooh, what kind of cool shit do I want to put in here? Need to figure out what, um, I think for the big, for the initial design, we're just going to use overworld Pokemon sprites and then eventually replace them with my own creatures. But yeah, if you fucking, what, what kind of Pokemon would you put in a little tide pool area? Cloisters and shelters, maybe just shelters for the starting area. Slow poker too. Oh, I thought I had collision set up for the uh, all the hills. Clearly no. That is a that is a tall ass hill. Cool. Okay. But I think the scale is all right as long as uh as long as I can zoom the camera out more and as long as we can move uh, faster than this. Kind of want to set up like. A, sp a run and a sprint. Oh, obviously, Krabby. Oh my god, yeah, Crazy Pants. Holy shit. I don't know how to think of that. Uh, and we're, I'll have the sprites for all of the... all of gold and all of silver. Since the the sprite... Uh, the sprites that I'm working with are from Heart Gold and Soul Silver. So we'll have 250-something. Uh, hey, big guy. All right, that was that was a fun little jaunt. Let's get back to working on shit. Ooh, star you too, yeah. Dang. So then the crazy thing is, I got to figure out like what what are the habits of those things? Obviously, Krabby walks sideways. Duh. But what does Krabby eat? 
What does Staryu eat? Staryu doesn't even have like a mouth. What the fuck does Staryu eat? Is it just like, does it capture prey and then like melt it into nutrients with its weird alien gem mind? Have I seen Pokemon Emerald Rogue, the ROM hack? No. Let's check it out. Oh, well, they even made a little cover for it. That's cute. Huh, it has a little dice thing. Well, those are just dice. Not a dice thing. Those are dice. Roguelike Pokemon, sweet. It's a roguelite made in Pokemon Emerald. Cool. The crazy pants. They have mouths as in star use? I don't think star use have mouths. Star use and Starmies don't have mouths. It's really fun you'd check it out someday. Hmm. I wish there was like a fucking a website for rating ROM hacks and then things to note about them. Like I have played some ROM hacks that people are like, they're really good. And then you get to the end of it and like there's like glitches and shit's just not complete and that's disappointing. two years ago. This is a cool idea, though. Oh, holy shit, a level 23 Reiku. Oh, dang. A level 31 Eevee? Bitch, evolve your Eevee. I realize that all the screenshots I've chosen don't show it very well. There's also character customization. Cool. Cool palette swaps. Yeah, cool. I will, uh... I'll keep this in mind if I want to play another Pokemon game. And it seems like something you could, uh, you could dip into and out of and not, not expect to, uh, require like hundreds of hours to beat like a normal Pokemon game. Hmm. Ooh, gym leaders from other regions. Cool. That sounds fun. carries over between runs when you start a run your bag and your party are saved and then reloaded once the run is finished so basically anything you purchase in the hub area is a permanent upgrade that's cool what a fun thing the mouth is on the other side damn it good point good point you're right star use a filter feeder yeah probably hold on hold on What does the back of Star You look like? Yeah, you know, I don't know. Because you're right, a regular starfish. The back of a regular starfish is like he's got a mouth. Star You doesn't actually have a mouth. How does Star You eat? Diet. Star You and Star Me are filter feeders and feed on plankton. All right. Okay. They're still capable of consuming poffins, berries, and other such sweets. Yeah, fucking right. Oh, my God. Hmm. Yeah, I guess there is kind of a hole on the back of Staryu. It doesn't look... It doesn't look big enough. It just looks like some lines they drew. I don't... I don't know. I don't like it. It needs to look more Lovecraftian. The backs of actual star starfish look fucking creepy. If you look at the sprite art, it looks more like a hole rather than the 3D render. All right, damn it, I'm going back. Uh, where even? Usually, like Bulbapedia has the Star You Sprites Gallery. Sure. Oh, but show me the back. Show me the fucking back. You, you fucking cowards. Show me what I would see in combat. Oh, there we go. That does look more like a hole. Also, it's kind of creepy that it's just like undulating. Repeatedly. Less like a hole here, interestingly. The animated sprite for Generation 5 actually looks like it's a hole. 
Hmm. All right. You guys win. Oh, here you can have a you can have a thing. I forgot about this. Let me find it. I made this thing for when you're right about a thing. See if it works. Here you go. All right. So, uh, damn, now I gotta start, I gotta start working on the South Beach. I'm like, I'm like intellectually beached out. Maybe I should work on a transition. The heated debate of whether Staryu has an orifice or not. Like it must, right? It's like, but, but did they draw it or I don't know. I thought it was kind of cool to imagine that like Staryu just like, because it's like psychic but not really. It just like breaks its prey down into energy and absorbs it. Previously only heard because of Kat's teamworm is correct. Yeah, Thomas did uh, activate that. Because he's a little fucking bastard and steps all over my stream deck. Even though it's like, it's not at a comfortable angle to stand. But he's fucking insane. Hmm. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, uh, big guy. I did buy a Bellatro. I forgot. We talked about the demo last time you were here. Yeah. I, uh... I'm very disappointed with myself, though, because, um... I have two challenges left before I've unlocked all the decks. I'm trying to do the, like, the higher level, like, chip. Uh, shoot. I can't remember what they're specifically called. But they all build upon themselves. Um, I'm trying to do the second to last one. Stakes, yeah. Uh, I accidentally selected the third to last one and then had an amazing run where I like, like I had the, I had the Gros Michel banana and it stayed with me for like six rounds. I got like multiple jokers that had, uh, times three going on them. It was like, like, it's so good. I'm, I'm still in the run on infinite mode. And then as I was getting through it, I was like, hmm, the uh, the stake, is, the antis are not climbing the way they were supposed to and realized I just didn't select the right challenge. It's fucking brutal. It, I'm, I'm so disappointed in myself. But yeah, it, it is very fun. Like, obviously, if I'm if I'm that far into it, it it's very fucking fun. It, they did a great job of co-op like co-opting. Uh, poker hands and many people's native understanding of poker and then gamifying it as a deck builder. It's fucking great. You won with the last deck and got your first highest stake win last night. Dang. Dang. Yeah, I need to, uh, I, I need to retry where I'm at. I, I, I need to get all the fucking decks unlocked. And then I want to beat every every different uh, stake challenge with the uh, with each deck if I can. It's fucking fun. A little frustrating. There's definitely some. Um, I think it's a little bit too much luck based. If you don't get like like sometimes I'll have a great fucking system going and I just don't get a Joker that gives me a multiplicative multiplier, and I'm like. I'm just like burning through rerolls in the store and just nothing comes up. And then other games, they just like shit out wonderful jokers in my face. And I'd like, I don't even have to try. It's a little bit frustrating. It's actually a dop dopamine farm. Yeah, it, it, it certainly feels like that. The higher stakes are just luck based. It, it's like you need the luck to succeed, but then you still have to make all the right decisions. So that part still feels good, but. I wish there was more of um, some kind of more intentional way for you to build a good to, to know you have it or don't have it by like by like round six or something. It's it's a little bit it's a little bit brutal. OK, so I'm kind of feeling beached out. So what I want to do is work on the transition from beach to other stuff. Uh, interesting. This sand grass terrain is not set up properly. Was I using this one? Hold on. 
Hold on. Do you match? Nope. Don't do not do that. You want to draw like a shape. No, right. You're for sand inside of grass. Okay. Okay. That's kind of lame. So then I think what we need to do is I right, I need to make a new tile. I made a note of that and haven't done it yet. A new uh, terrain set. I need to like essentially invert this. I need grass that's surround or yeah, I need grass that's surrounded by sand. Okay, that's annoying. Uh that's fine though because we can still we can still do everything except the transition. So, I need to find where the grass tile set is. Uh, it's in three at the top of three. Yeah, it's at the top of three. Okay, so these are the four different random grass tiles. It's so annoying to get a run going on high stakes. Yeah, it just feels like you fail over and over. And like, uh, the pretty much all the other, uh, like unlocking all the other decks and the, the first two stakes, like I can, I can pretty much make anything work. Almost anything can, I can get to a, an anti-8 victory. Getting past anti-11, I still haven't been able to fucking do. But, like, I can make almost anything work. Until the, the, the higher stake challenges. I just fucking can't. It's so hard. Not giving you cash for the small blinds, and then building on that, and making the antis, or uh, the... Yeah, shit, it's the, the ante that is the, the score you have to get. They raise, they rise quicker. It's fucking brutal. You did a stream where you weren't going to end until you beat the final stake to unlock the final deck and you were alive for like five and a half hours. Honestly, that sounds not that bad. I feel like it would take me so much longer. Oh, you were up until like 6 a.m. Okay, yeah, that's, that's probably not great. That sounds bad. Okay, so we're going to build grass on ground t level two to be on top of the sand. And I think we're just gonna like, oh shoot, actually I need to make sure. Yeah, yeah, I didn't have it selected. So what we wanna do is we have these four tiles selected and if we choose randomize, it will just select random ones from these tiles. So then we'll just kind of have a random assortment of grass. Um. You know what? We can we can kill our little island. The little island I was just kind of screwing around with. Um, so yeah, let me grab the eraser. I don't think everything is on. Right, nothing's on ground two because ground two is new. So get rid of the ground. Get rid of ground objects. Let's get rid of height one objects. Ooh, and then one height two object. Okay. All right, we're good. Okay, we'll go back to being on ground two. Got some stuff to do today, today, so you got a bounce? Yeah, for sure, big guy. Thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by. I'm gonna be playing some Tometsi in just a few minutes. It'll, it'll it'll be a good time. Uh okay. So sure, we're just for now. We're gonna make this a big ass fucking square, and then eventually I'll make it look nice. We'll make the transition. No, no. I'm holding Control and Shift game. I don't know what to tell you. Ooh, if we scroll, we can move. That's pretty cool. Not as fast as I'd like. It gets it gets the I'm on the eraser. Uh shoot me. Oh my god, bro. Okay. Can we can we scroll? We can still scroll, even when we're not on the eraser. Great. That would be so brutal if that was an eraser only function. Okay, then let's zoom in and make sure we're, we're just kind of randomized. Yeah, there's just a random smattering of grass bits. Yeah, maybe at some point I'll stream Bellatro. It might make for a nice, like, I've got 30 minutes or an hour after something's done. Ooh, yeah, actually, 30 minutes is a bit hard. Some runs take a long time. But actually, Bellatro is not a great in-betweener game. I think we'll just stick to doing some some no-guess evil, evil boards in uh, Minesweeper Online like Friday. Okay. 
You had two runs yesterday where you lost Grow Michelle on the first round. So that could be cool though, because then you can get the um the the multiplicative multiplier one. Shit. What is that one? Is that one just the Cavendish? Whatever fucking banana we have now. Yeah, Cavendish. Yeah, it sucks you're not like guaranteed to get it. It'd be cool if like if it had an increasingly higher chance to show up. Um, man, I, I could not believe in the, the run I'm still currently in that, uh, I carried that, the Grow Michelle for, I guess it was, it was, I lost it on the boss of, uh, anti six. So that's like, it, it, it helped me. Oh, and I got it at the very beginning, the, like the first store. So it like, it helped me for like 18 ish rounds. It's fucking crazy. I finally lost it and was like, yeah, you know what? All right. How far out can we zoom? Further zoomed out, I can get this. It's so hard to get the right spot. I think that's it. I think we got it. All right. Okay, so now here's the thing. I think we're going to go all the way over to this beach, but... But we got to do rocky rocky area over here so we're not actually this is not permanent hmm. what is that random tile that I'm about to cover over there's some random little thing floating it looks like a corner of water that's funny all right Okay, so I don't want to hit the starting area. Like I said, that's going to be the f the footprint of where the... Uh... Holy shit, is there a f there's a fill bucket. Now, hold on. Uh, the, the lab is going to be in this central area. Can I not... Can I not draw just a line with control? Or is it shift? Shift does the line. Okay. Okay, so let's, yeah, let's try this. Let's say if this were going to be outline of where we're going to have the lab, which it, it may end up being bigger. bigger. I don't know. Uh, and then if we were to come down here and then start a line. Oh, we can't scroll. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, let's just find out if the fill tool works like I hope it does. Because if it doesn't work like I hope it does, then this would be a waste of time. Okay, so now we have a bounded space. Oh, and it's telling me that it's going to work like I think it does. All right, cool. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't. You don't need to. Actually, well, hold on. Will you just play nice with the boundary of the the sand? It's on a different layer. You you wouldn't try to fill the whole map, would you? Let's try it. Clicked. He filled the whole map. Okay, undo. <laughs> the, honestly, that makes sense. That's what you should do. I get it. I get it. Fuck, I cannot see if this line is straight. Doesn't matter. Fix it in post. Shit. Right, this part goes down further. Okay. Actually straight. That's not. Should be good enough though. Okay, shoot. Trying to use A sprite shortcuts. Oh no. I press the G button, which is the bucket tool in A sprite. Now I have this weird scrolling thing. Can I can I hit escape to get out of that? No. I can't. What if I hit G again? No. <laughs> okay, I don't know what that is. Crap. What did I do? That is frustrating. 
Is that a tool to like move? Like what it Sure, that just lets me click and move. I can now use the mouse to pan instead of the middle button. How do I get out of this? Control G? No. All right. Well, honestly, this is a good place to stop for now. Um, so let's see. What are we going to do next? We're going to work in the grassland area. Uh, we need to put a dock. We're going to put a dock up here. Shoot, that's going to interfere with my cool tide pools. Uh, we'll put it in between them, I guess. Or maybe right here. We need to build a dock and then a road up. And then we'll figure out the grasslands. Add some trees and tall grass and little berms to jump over. Then we need to build, like, the ruins. Uh, also build the lab itself, like the external building. Uh, we'll figure out the, like, rocky beach and rocky... Um, like terrain as well that's surrounding the ruins. And then at some point we'll come back and finish up the beaches. Shit. This is gonna take a while. Anyway, let's uh let's play some Timetsi. Hopefully my back can last for two hours. Might only be able to do one. It is fucking sore. Anyway, I'll be right back. Thanks for hanging out, dudes. See you on the other side.